Hi guys, in this video I will talk about how to test an alternator while it's still on the motor. You, do you have your battery light on your dash or when you're driving your light flickers at night, your headlights flicker? Let's like say for example if your radio goes on, you hear the bass go on and off. It could be your alternator or you have a misfire while you're driving, like your ignition is about to cut off and your car is bucking. Or in the morning when you go to start your car, the, the battery's dead. Or if, you, if your car shuts off while you're driving also. Let's say also uh, if you're driving and you have like electrical gremlins, like the door locks start going on and off while like your car's possessed. Well, don't call the priest, you can call this clown. Uh, also, if you hear like a bearing noise, a grinding noise, a high-pitched noise coming from your alternator... You, that means your bearings about your bearings about to go put on you, and uh, it's time to change it. And in order to isolate that, what you could do is you could put a screwdriver in your ear and put it on the casing of the alternator. Now, be careful for uh, the belt. Make sure you don't have like any chains dangling down to catch your chains, and that, that, that could spell disaster. So make sure uh, you're aware of all moving parts if you do something like that. And put your ear on the screwdriver and on the alternator case. Then put your ear and the screwdriver on, like, for example, the actual motor and see if uh, it's louder on the case than the motor. Make sure your belts aren't loose. This is a big one. Uh, if you hear your belts making noise, squealing noises, then uh, it could be a belt tensioner. Or if you have V-belts, make sure they're, they're at the proper tension. You can also grab the pulley of, alternators, of the alternator, see if it moves around, if it wobbles, or take a look at it while the motor is running, see if it wobbles. That could also be an indication the alternator is about to go. Uh, also, don't forget to check, number one thing, is to make sure all your connections and the battery are, are good. No corrosion. Uh, if there is corrosion, take the posts, uh, take, the terminal, take the terminals off the posts, sand, find, uh, send them down, find sandpaper. Uh, if there's any uh, loose f connections, also grab the wires and move them around to see if uh, they're loose with your hands. That, uh, you tighten them down, that could be your issue too. Uh, you could also do a voltage drop test to see if the, vo if the cables are good. That you could watch my video on how to do a voltage drop test. So don't condemn your alternator just because uh, the battery's not charging. You have to make sure you diagnose it properly. Also, make sure at rest your alternator voltage doesn't go down. For example, here I have my DVOM, my digital multimeter over here, set at DC volts, and the red's going to the red positive side of the battery, and the black goes in the common port on the alternator, on, on, the, on, the, on the multimeter, sorry, going to the negative on the battery and set it to DC volts and at rest you see here 12.5 that's a good reading for this car uh, it should be around say 12.4 to 12.8 uh, if it's higher than 12.6 you probably have a surface charge to go inside you know turn the lights on or turn the radio on for a second and wait off a couple of minutes uh, it'll stabilize back down another thing make sure you don't have a parasitic draw and you can watch my parasitic draw test for that one. A common thing for that is, uh, say you have a bad diode in the alternator and it's grounding to short, you have a short to ground, um, you can slowly discharge your battery that way and you might think it's your alternator not charging your battery enough. Now what you can do to test that is, take your cable going to the alternator, take it off the alternator from the back of the alternator, the red thick cable. And uh, if your battery's not dead the next morning, if you do that at night, then uh, and, and it does drain if the battery cable is on it, that means you have a bad alternator or, or bad diode or whatever inside the alternator. So at rest, like I said, should be anywhere from 12.3, 12.2 to 12.8. That's about good. Now when you start the car, let me start the car here. It's around 14.3-ish, 14.4, um, that's good, it should be anywhere, at least a volt higher it should be, from that rest, 
when you start the car and it's idle. It should be anywhere from 13 to 13.3 to 14.8, depends on your, on your car. Um, also, make sure your manual, check your manual to see if it's uh, within spec. I'm just giving you a general of what I've seen, generally, the voltages. So, when you're idling, one other thing to check is you load the alternator, see if it can handle that load. So let's turn everything on, including including the rear defroster. Let's do that. It's here. Turn the radio on. It's here. Turn the lights on. The lights on. I have a bunch of stuff on here. And let's see where we're at. 13.8 at idle. Now. You should be at least 12 hot, 12.5 volts at least, or higher here. Now, th what you're doing here is you're giving the alternator a load, and this will tell you if it can handle that load. In this case, this is perfect. My alternator is one sexy biatch, so that's good. Also, at 1500 RPM, let's do that. If I could get steady, that's yeah, that's about about good. Anyway, at 1500 RPM, as you can see there, I'm at 14.1. You don't want to see more than 15.4 volts. If you do, that means your alternator is overcharging, and most likely you have something wrong with the regulator of the alternator. The regulator. Now, be careful. Some cars have external regulators. So you could go to you could go and just replace that. Some cars have an internal regulator inside the alternator. That's a little more common that I've seen. And some cars, the ECU controls it. The computer controls the regulation of the alternator. Most luxury cars have that. So again, make sure you check your uh, car specs on that. Your manual. One way to check this, the specs is go to alldataDIY.com. I'm not endorsing that website. I'm just saying that's just an example to go to. It's like 20 bucks for your vehicle. Okay. And uh, if you suspect the regulator, that's actually an easy fix. If it's an external regulator, you're lucky. Also, if it's a regulator, uh, some alternators have a full field test capability. That's where you go inside the the back, so you go to the back of the alternator, you see a half moon crescent shape. You stick a safety pin in there, and it bypasses the regulator and gives you full field voltage. So you should see full voltage on the alternator when you see when, when you do that. Now, don't do that if you're a novice, because you could burn th a lot of things doing that. You could fry a lot of stuff, especially in luxury cars. So they're not I do not recommend doing that unless you know what you're doing. But that's for your, you mechanics out there. That's another way to do to make sure the regulator is bad. If everything else is all good and you see a high voltage and when you uh, bypass it and the voltage is still the same, that means your regulator is bad. So, keep an eye out for my voltage drop. You can also look for my videos for my voltage drop test, which will help you out diagnosing alternate issues. And uh, also the parasitic draw test. Watch that video to make sure you don't have any parasitic draw. And to, uh, you know, rule out that, any, any parasitic draw that, you know, can make you think it's the alternator. So, thanks for watching this video, and subscribe to this clown. It's free to subscribe. Also, like me. There's plenty of me to like, so don't worry. You're good. Thanks for watching, and take care.